Howdy friends! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own DIY door frame training board for climbing. And this is just a solution I came up with to kind of keep me in shape between gym visits or outdoor climbs. And it's just really a great way to work out as well. So you can see here it's a fairly simple design. It's based off of a design I saw on Blank Slate Climbing's website based on their double mega design. Pretty similar, but mine's a little bit bigger, a little beefier. And you can see here it's two grids of maple plywood, and they're actually held on top of the door frame with a little railing, one inch railing. And then you have these metal plates on both of them that keep them from pivoting inward. They kind of slide between the door and the door frame. And then these two bolts that actually connect the two sheets together, so when you're climbing on it, they don't fall off the door frame. So far I have found this design to be extremely sturdy, it holds up really well to climbing, it doesn't shift around at all, and it doesn't leave any damage on the door frame, which is key for apartment dwelling. So let's get into the materials. And although the materials here are fairly straightforward, there are a good number of them and kind of specific dimensions on them, so make sure to check them out here and I'll also list them on my website as well. But essentially you're going to need these felt blankets to protect your door frame when it's actually when the board is in contact with it the sponge window seal down here will actually run underneath the bar that sits on top of the door frame and protect it even further and obviously the biggest cost here is going to be the maple plywood a little more expensive than pine plywood comes out to around fifty three dollars and in addition to the actual hardware you're going to need some climbing hardware as well i found these holds on craigslist for fairly cheap but you can find climbing holds all over the internet and amazon has some cheap ones too then you're going to need some various size bolts to actually hold the climbing holds in. And most importantly, you're going to need some 3 8 inch T-nuts. These are fairly common in the climbing world, easy to find. I'll put a link to Amazon in the description and on my website. But these are also going to be used to hold the actual board together. And then finally, you will need a 16 inch 12 gauge heavy duty strap plate. And that's what the little supports for the door frame will be made out of. And all said and done, total material cost here comes out to $78.50. If you were to buy a board like this new, it would be probably around $200, so you're saving over half, and you'll actually have enough plywood left over to make two more of these boards if you really wanted. So the first step in actually designing the board is measuring your door frame. You can see here I have a fairly tight door frame, so this build should work for most people, but you're going to want to double check the height from the top of your door frame to the ceiling make sure that it's similar to mine and that'll be the biggest factor here and obviously you'll want to check width as well but most door frames are going to have a little more room than i do here so this build should work for most people so my measurement from the top of the door frame to the ceiling is 11 inches and i decided to make the board 10 and a half inches tall just to keep it from being at risk of actually touching the top of the ceiling as far as width goes i did 31 inches wide which allows a little bit of overlap on the door frame there like you can see on the left and just gives me a little more climbing room a little more adaptability on the board for larger holds climbing holds so to get started the first thing you're gonna have to do is actually get some maple plywood and I chose maple because it's a little bit harder it holds up a little bit better and it looks much nicer on display than pine plywood does now from this plywood we're gonna need four dimension pieces cut and it's fairly straightforward we're going to need two rectangles 31 inches by 20 inches unless your door frame dictates a different size and two strips of plywood one inch by 31 inches to form the railings that actually sit on the door frame now if you're like me and you're in an apartment you're still in luck because you can get the people at the hardware store to actually cut your plywood for you using this machine here and when it's all said and done you'll have pieces just like these and you'll have a big chunk of leftover plywood from which you could actually make two more boards if you really wanted to for friends or you could save it for other projects. And the first step once you get the plywood home is to sand everything. You want to make sure to get all the edges just to make sure there's no splinters that are going to catch you when you're actually climbing on the board. So once you have your edges sanded nice and smooth like this, you're going to actually lay out the designs on the boards. Now keep in mind, you're doing the same layout on each board, but you're doing it mirrored so that when the two boards are actually facing each other, the bolt holes all line up. And the first step to laying out the board is 
determining where the 1 inch by 31 inch support bar that sits on top of the door frame is actually going to go. I calculated that mine would be 10 and a half inches from the top of the board. You can see it laid out here. And I, go, I went ahead and drew it onto the board so I knew where it would be. And then I began to lay out the grid. Now the grid itself is fairly simple to lay out. It's a 3 inch grid so each of the holes are 3 inches apart and there are 10 holes wide by 6 holes tall. The only concern is you want to make sure that none of those holes actually exit where your support bar is going to be because you can't actually put T-nuts there. And to do that, I, you can see the grid is laid out here and I inset the grid 2.5 inches from the top and bottom of the board and 2 inches from the sides of the board. You can see the finished grid on the two boards here and you'll see some other holes but I'll show you how to measure those out here in a second. And if this is seeming a little too complex, I will host a SketchUp file on my website so you can actually take a look at that and get the exact dimensions, lay it out more easily on your own at home. Now let's lay out these steel supports. And you can see the two bolts that we're going to be laying out in the bottom right of this image. It's where the two T-nuts are. And to do that, we're going to draw three lines onto our piece of steel. One in the middle, vertically, that perfectly divides it into two halves. And then two more vertically, three and a quarter inches in from each the left and the right sides. And what those are going to represent is the edge of our climbing board and they're going to allow us to actually line up this metal plate with the edge of the board and draw a little pattern on it and mark out the holes where we're going to run the bolts through. So here I'm drawing a line a half inch from the bottom of the board and that's where the bottom of the bracket will sit. And then I'm going to take that bracket, line up the vertical line I drew three and a quarter inches in and trace it out just to make sure it sits on the board correctly. And then I'm going to mark out the two holes where I'll actually be drilling the bolts through. And that'll be the bottom left and the top right there. Now I'm going to trace the same outline on the other board except highlighting the top left and bottom right bolt holes because the boards are supposed to be mirrored. And now all that's left to mark out are these four bolt holes where the two sections of all thread will run through both boards and hold them onto the door frame. And these are all six and a quarter inches from the bottom of the board. One of them is one and a half inches from the side of the board and the other is seven inches from the side of the board. And remember these two boards are going to be mirrored so just keep that in mind, reference the SketchUp file and you'll be good. Now the build from here is very straightforward so I'm going to let the video do the talking but I'll add in some commentary and some text when it's necessary.
Well, that about wraps up the build, guys. It's, uh, I mean, it's a fairly straightforward build, and I'm not going to show any assembly videos on it just because that would be pretty long and tedious, and it's really straightforward. It's easy to put the parts together and put it up on the door. But you can see here we are kind of messing around with trying out different climbing hold positions and different climbing holds and angles, and that's one of the really fun parts about this board is you can customize it to your needs, to what you want to train for, or just make it more fun. And one thing I didn't mention are the T-nuts, and they, behind each of these climbing hold bolts is a T-nut within that hole that is gripped into the wood with little spikes that keeps it from spinning. And the way you put those in is you can either, either hammer them in or just really tighten down the holds and pull them in as you tighten the holds. Either way works. Hammering tends to go a little faster, though. But that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh... As always, if you want to support content like this and keep more coming, you can head over to my Patreon page. Or you can actually support me for free just by shopping through my Amazon link in the description. But yeah, thanks for hanging around. We'll see you next time.